Hallelujah. Good day. This is Obod Naya Aboke, and you are welcome to this broadcast. Um, today I want to look at a very important topic. Uh, but before we go into in, in, into the message of of today, kindly, if you are watching on YouTube, kindly take out a second, click on the subscribe button right below this this this, this video. You know, subscribe to my channel so that you can receive um, more content as they come. I believe, oh, I, I I perceive that what God wants to do through this channel is massive. It's massive. I I, I don't even have the the full picture, but I perceive. I perceive. What I perceive is that through this channel, lives will be transformed. So go ahead if you are listening via audio. Um, you can head over to YouTube, youtube.com, um, search for Obunaya Aboke and subscribe to my channel. You'll be blessed in your subscription. I am telling you, I am telling you, God is said to do something massive. Um, you know, there are some times you just know things are, you know, it just comes to you. You don't know, you are wondering, God, what is it you want to do? But you just know, you just know that there is a, ah, we can only wait and see what God would unleash. Father, ah, <laughs> ah, it's, it's, it's wonderful working with the Lord. You know that it's wonderful working with the Lord. You know when you walk with the Lord, your life just becomes a a a a a, a sign and a wonder to the nations. All right, so today we want to look at a very interesting topic, and I've tagged it "Tend It." Tend it. T e n d. Tend it. And before we start, I want us to just pray in the spirit for one or two minutes and uh, cleanse our hearts, make our hearts receptive to the word of the Lord. You know, something about the word of the Lord is that the word of God can be viable, can be powerful, and yet not have impact in your life. You know, it says, and the sower went to sow. The sower cast forth seed, and some of the seed fell on the good soil, some fell by the roadside, some fell on the rock, some fell on tony ground. And you sow, you see the same quality of seed on different source and they produce different results so the word of the lord can come to you all strong and powerful and but yet the 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 type of heart you have you know affects the productivity of the world can you just go in the spirit and begin to prepare your heart this morning and say, Lord, ha, merendo saia, predila, crovretila, barahan, die sofrata, mene ruse fretene maragadisha, prehende ri akratia sofrata pa, repregatia katapa, katia kete kete kete, le brunde fretele ruse frata paragadile, cupre de regatele gadana, rocutono cotobele catene balada pa, resotope, esotope regate de kete le kete kete kete, rocataka taka 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 Repele tepe ke tepe ke tele ke tepe la pa Ragatai la prendo rafla dia ro prahada Repregeti la anna asue felete Belingro to vrahandie ke prondo vada I will not miss out on what you are said to do Le riso fretina maha My heart is open, my heart is yielded unto you E le rindo fretele paragadire do raba la dia ke te ke te Ragede ke te ke te ke te ke te ke te Mene na mono no bono Repele te e soto peregadi no frene rabada pa la rento pel ingre no sharam de rifrehete rosi pre de pahalia reso pre ekatelia melene menje pele de ba rezende pre no rabala pa regede ina manama i see a lady you are about to enter your labor period i mean a physical labor you are pregnant you are about to go into labor i declare in the name of jesus there is the breath in her le runs de prenia le there is ease in your burden in the name of Jesus even though the enemy may have planned it for 
for for for something terrible i declare in the name of jesus the lord comes true for you the reino shapala reprenia the kunze sefelia the baby boy a magician you are safe the baby is safe in the name of jesus le rezo so prete be reketila marana ramana na mena na mena na mena mena na mena ba rese se pele teina maka pa hande shifenete la barako le vrenia talia lord we thank you shabale ruse vrete manama lord we come this day that your word will impact our lives in the name of jesus we have prayed amen amen so quickly we go right into the word i have called it tent it now um in life there are some persons that have come to believe that there is nothing in them for their generation oh my god you know just um some some days back i i i I posted a video on my YouTube channel that I called Made for Your Generation. And you know, ah men tojere prene mahande refrania. There is something in you that is for your generation. But some persons don't see that in them. They look at their lives and they are and they are wondering, oh God, what is it about me? Why is my life like this? What I don't even have anything to offer to my immediate friends. I don't have anything to offer to my family. What is it that you have put in me? I see others they are skilled, um, they are musically inclined, they can play an instrument, they can sing, they can some some persons can talk they can um, uh, 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 stand up in the in the crowd and talk and everybody's like oh wow wow but me i don't have anything what is it that you have placed in me and they have gotten to the place of low self esteem where they are looking into their in, into themselves and they are like ah there is nothing in this life there is nothing in me but i want to tell you this day that there is something in you you are not a nobody god does not create nobodies let me let me say that again god does not create nobodies ah and god is, is bringing to my heart you may be in that place where you have a job a good paying job a well paying job so you are you are you are you are financially stable but that is just all you are doing in the sense that there is nothing special in quote about you so you've come to that place where you are satisfied with the job you are no longer bothered about what you have what god has deposited in you for your generation is still a wrong place to be so god is saying even though you have that well paying job there is something in you that i have placed there for your generation so there is something in every one of us god does not create nobodies god doesn't just create us to just um go through life in that monotonous cycle you know you are giving birth to you feed and you grow you grow um up to the age that you can go to school and you enrolled in the school and you go to school you come out of um primary school you get into secondary school after secondary school you get into university when you're done with, with university you try to get a job when you get a job you try to get a wife when you get a wife you try to raise a family you, you give birth to children and then you are out of this world you die and and then you pass and you go that is not what god has called us for that's not why he has created us so don't believe the the lie of the devil to you that there is nothing about your life you've looked at people all around you and and these people are great men they are talented they are doing mighty things and you are like god what is it about me what what did you place in me what did you place in me for my generation the first consciousness i wanted to have 
as concerning this is that you are not a nobody there is something in you for your generation jeremiah 1 verse 5 seems to be my favorite scripture when it comes to these matters it says um god was talking to jeremiah he told him before i formed you i knew you and i ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations that's jeremiah 1 verse 5 it says before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee <laughs> that means that before we come into this world we are already existing in another place uh, <laughs> and after we are through with this world we will go back to that place where we came from <laughs> oh god oh god oh god so he said before that's a story for another day say before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb i sanctified thee and i ordained thee a prophet unto the nations that means that there is an assignment for every person it's as though you are in the factory for example let's say in a, 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 a factory that bakes bread so before the bread is churned out into the world there is a purpose for the bread the purpose is simple go into the world and allow yourself to be eaten allow yourself to be broken by men and eaten and bring satisfaction to men so the manufacturers of bread the producers of bread don't just produce bread and then just throw it out into the world without a purpose there is a purpose for the bread to want to be broken and eaten in the same way god does not just turn out people into the world there is always a purpose for god churning out men into the world and that same purpose is what to be broken and be eaten by men so what i mean by being broken and eaten is that you gain a usefulness to men but you can only be useful when you are broken so the scripture will say that on that day they were eating the passover and then jesus took bread and break it and when he had done so he gave it to his disciples saying take it. this is my body so before he offered the bread to them he broke the bread he broke the bread you are not useful to your generation if you are not broken when jesus was faced with the five thousand men he took bread and he broke it first it is only broken men that are useful to their generation so you may be at that place where god is trying to break you and the breaking process is usually not funny he's trying to break you ah i remember a song the 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 song says broken with grace god breaks you with grace the breaking process though it's not funny it's not easy but god does it with grace and you come out useful to the kingdom of god so god is trying to break you you are in that season where god is is is, is working in you trying to break you to break off self from you selfishness from you break off um 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 yourself so that you can be pure and be useful to the kingdom so i don't know how we go here okay i was talking about bakery and all that so there is always a purpose but that word is for someone there is always a purpose yield to the breaking process of god don't leave the process he's breaking you it's not it's not it's 
is is uh it's it, it's not something that is for example when gold is being passed in the fire the fire is is heating on the gold the fire is hot but that fire is a purifying fire if the gold can just stay in that fire he, he would emerge pure and valuable so stay in that process let the lord break you and then you can be useful to the to the kingdom so back to our bakery so i are uh, the producers of bread they always have a purpose for the bread in the same way when god was fashioning us and uh, 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 i'm giving us a body to introduce us into the world there is always a purpose in his heart for our lives so he does not just produce nobodies and send into the world to be nobodies and do nothing and just live uh um live through the years and then go back no god does not do that he crafts us out with a purpose in mind so it is that purpose he has in mind that determines how he will craft us so that's why everybody is not the same everybody doesn't have the same the same personality every person does not have the same um um um, the same build the same you see so some persons some persons are quiet some are loud some are uh some think a lot some you know are action oriented some are this some are that so your body make up your personality is tied to your purpose so god has a purpose for you and the purpose goes beyond you so god does not create people and say oh ah we created this man what do we make him do what 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 will he he do um 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 uh let's say okay okay try to mm -mm, mm -mm. god develops the purpose in his heart first and then fashions you out in line with that purpose and then sends you into the world so it says before i formed thee i knew you before you came out of the womb i've already sanctified you and ordained you a prophet unto the nation so you are not a nobody that's my point with that scripture god does not create nobodies you know when you when you read the book of psalm psalm 127 from verse 3 right it says lo children are an an are and heritage of the lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man so are children of the youth happy is the man that has his quiver full of them now where i want to point out is in verse 4 it says as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man so are children of the youth now it does not say that the the the, the youth or the young man is the person that makes them arrows the young man is just the one that holds the arrows but children are arrows so god fashions every child as an arrow ah do you understand that god fashions every child as an arrow sharpens the child as an arrow and then hands the child over to a man so that man becomes the warrior that shoots out that child to the nations so god does not just create um nobodies he creates arrows he creates people with an assignment for the for the earth and then he sends them into the earth so you are not a nobody there is something in you that's the first consciousness i want you to have so you may be looking at your life right now and and it's as though there is nothing in you so you are looking at your present circumstance and the present circumstance is 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 telling you there is nothing in you there is nothing in you there is nothing in you i want you to talk back to that circumstance and say no 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 you are not the one that defines my 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 arrow you are not the one that defines my life you are not the one that defines whether there is something in me or not it is yahweh and yahweh has put something in me 
So even if you are looking at your life right now and it's like there's nothing in you, it does not mean that there is nothing in you. What it does mean is that that which is in you has not yet appeared, has not yet been revealed. Kai, 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 kai. So, so when, when you get to a land that there is gold, the gold is not on the surface. The gold is buried deep down in the earth crust. And then you are looking on the surface and, and you are like, I, I thought they say there's, there's, there's gold in this land. I thought they said there's gold in this land. And you are wondering, where is the gold? Where is the gold? <laughs> My brother, there is gold in that land. It's just that it has not been revealed. It has not appeared. So when you begin to dig down, to dig down, dig the earth, you are digging, digging. A time will come, you would get to that place where there is gold. And then you would unveil the gold and you'd be like, wow, there is really gold in this land. So there is something in you if you are not seeing it it does not mean it's not there it just means that it has not been revealed it has not been made manifest it has not appeared so that the first consciousness i want you to have there is something in you that the nations need there is something about your life that is that that will impact impact the nations so when we look at the story of gideon we see the same thing so Gideon was in that place where he, he, he thought that there was nothing in him. He had already, you know, looked around, looked at his present circumstance, looked at the external circumstance, and the circumstance was screaming at him, there is nothing in you. <laughs> ah. Oh, but when God stepped into the scene, we suddenly discover that there is something in that man for a generation, for a nation. Not even for a, a not even for his family, for a whole nation. So let's read Judges chapter 6. So you see what I'm talking about from verse 11. Judges 6 from verse 11. The scripture says, and there came, when you read from verse 1, you see how um it was that you know the, the children of israel they were suffering from oppression from the midianites and all and all and all and all of that and then there was fear generally in the land of israel so verse 11 it said and there came an angel of the lord and sat under an oak which was in opera opera that pertained unto joash the abusrite and his son gideon threshed wheat by the wine press who threshes wheat by the wine press? Who threshes wheat? When you want to thresh wheat, you should go to the mountain top so, so that the wind can blow up the chaff. But now here was a man hiding in the wine press, threshing wheat. What was the reason? He was afraid of the Midianites. So you, you readily see that. Gideon did not think that there was something about him. He says he threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. So imagine a man hiding by the wine press, trying to hide from the Midianites, crushing the wheat gently. I, 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 can, I can just picture him trying not to make a sound, you know, doing it gently, gently, gently. And then the angel appears and tells him, Thou mighty man of valor. You'll be like, what? Who are you talking to? <laughs> so Gideon was in that place where he thought there was nothing in him. Where he thought there was nothing in him for his nation. He thought he was a nobody. He thought that there was nothing he could do about the current situation, about the current circumstance. You know, the current circumstance has, has, you know, has painted the picture, a caricature picture of him. That he was weak, that he was not strong, that he was a nobody. There was nothing he could do to deliver the, 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 the nation. That was the picture that the circumstances around him painted of him. 
and he brought into that picture but when god appears god tells him thou mighty man of valor god was looking into him and he was seeing what he put in him before sending him into the earth and he says gideon you are a mighty man of valor Hmm. oh my god you are in that place you are not seeing what god has put in you so he has affected your idea your ideology of yourself he has affected your perception of yourself because you are not seeing what god has put in you therefore you have started seeing yourself as being weak has been nothing like there is nothing in you ah god let me just get by this word and and i want to i want to i want to come home no you are not going in anywhere <laughs> you must do that which god has called you to do it's beautiful when you step into what god has called you to do so there is something in you let's continue with that scripture then verse 13 and Gideon said unto him oh my lord if the lord be with us why then is all this befalling us and where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of saying did did not the lord bring us up from egypt but now the lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the midianites so Gideon was telling the lord god i have heard of of your mighty acts through certain men i have heard of moses how he delivered the israelite i have heard of this person i have heard of the strong works i have heard of so i have heard of that i have heard of this i have heard of that you were with these people but it does not appear that you are with me so you've looked around you've seen things people doing things and you are like god you are walking through this man and you've got into that place where you are asking god how is it how is it possible that you are with me so that was the place that gideon was verse 14 and the lord looked upon him and said go in this thy might and thou shalt save israel from the hand of the midianites have not i sent thee so god was looking at him he was calling that which was in him verse 16 15 and he said unto him "O my lord wherewith shall i save israel behold my family is poor in manasseh and i am the least in my father's house you see that was the problem of gideon that was his problem he wasn't seeing the treasure in him he wasn't seeing the strength in him he had allowed the external circumstance to mar his perception of himself so he had allowed his background to define who he was he was telling god i am coming from a weak family even in that family my family is the smallest in 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 the tribes of israel and in that family i am the weakest i am from the weakest family in that family i am the smallest so he 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 allowed his background to define who he was maybe you have allowed your background to define to give you a to paint a picture of your life no your background is not your picture your picture can only happen can only be that which god has painted not what your background has painted for you not what your circumstances has, has painted for you anything that your background can paint for you is a caricature it's not the truth it's not the pure image even if it's fine even if it's beautiful it's not the it's not the full picture whatever your background paints is not you whatever your circumstances paint is not you you can only obtain your full picture your accurate representation from your producer so Gideon was in that place where he had allowed his background to paint a picture of him and he accepted that picture he embraced that picture and he was living that picture this morning i call you 
with a prophetic voice and I declare that you leave the picture that, that circumstances have painted for you, have painted about you in the name of Jesus. You trust that picture. I declare the picture is torn right now. I begin to see the picture that God himself has painted of you. God was painting a picture. He was revealing to Gideon that which was in him. He says, you are a mighty man. He says, go in this thy might and you will save Israel from the Midianites. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so God was showing Gideon his true self right from verse 12. God was revealing to Gideon his true self, but Gideon was not seeing it because he had, I, I, I don't know how old he was at this point, but he had lived several years on the earth and those number of years had painted the picture for him. That's why as parents, as parents, as parents, you must make sure that as the, as the child is growing up, you fashion the child with the correct picture. You must see what the child is. So for you to parent a child very well, you must have a, a glimpse of who he is and you raise him up in that line. So the, the, the parents of Samson, they asked that angel, Tell us, what will this child be? How do we train him? Every parent must do that. You don't just give birth and then have a general training for your child. No. No. You must sustain that capacity to be able to look into the vistas of eternity and capture the picture for your child and groom him in that direction. So, Gideon didn't have that. And it was, it, was, it was a problem. So, as the same with Gideon, there is always something that God has deposited in the life. The only thing we need to do is for us to do what? To tend it and it will appear and, and will become useful to our nation. It will become useful to our generation. We will enter the fullness of what God has called us into. Whatever it may be. It may be in, 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 in any mountain of the of, of, of in any mountain. The mountain of governance. It may be the mountain of family. The mountain of, uh, of religion. The mountain of entertainment, of media. The mountain of any mountain at all. There is always a mountain that God has assigned you to. There is always so when you tend when you tend to what god has put in you it would appear and then you would take your place on that mountain so how do we tend it as, as we begin to wrap things up today how do we tend that which god has put in us isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 to 3 let's read that scripture and then we talk from that scripture and then we wrap it up for for today i believe you're already getting blessed isaiah chapter 16 verse 1 to 3 says arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon thee for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon the vestry which is where i'm heading to and the gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising that means that what will make you useful to the kings what will, you, will make you useful to the gentiles to the nations is your light it's your light your light it says the gentiles they will come to thy light so it says arise shine your light is come so you have to arise let your light shine then the gentiles the nations will come to your light kings will come to your light you'll be able to influence nations to influence kings to 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 to, to do business on on one of the seven one or more of the seven mountains of influence and in 
back to your generation so lights lights so you tend it you tend it and let and you let your light shine so how do you let your light shine i will look at it in two perspectives it says the gentiles will come to your light and kings to the brightness is it it talking about light the brightness to the brightness of your rising so there is a light you will let out in the spirit realm so the first point is that tend it spiritually tend it spiritually the spiritual tending staying under god there is a light that your light would there is a light that your life would emit and people cannot resist you mm. Mm. there is a light you would uh, you would emit in the spirit realm that would attract nations to you so he says that kings will only come to the brightness of your horizon the gentiles will only come when they see your light the the three men from the east they saw the light of jesus in the form of a star and they were coming they traveled from the far ends of the earth to where Jesus was born and they paid homage. It is your light that attracts men. It's not by shouting. It's not by being everywhere. It's your light. And I'm taking it first from the spiritual perspective. The light you emit in the spirit realm determines who comes to you shabala banderus efram mahanderus efratana makani hana nama 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 jetenenenen pele ruse frehenge mede de pele no sha there is something you emit that determines what happens in your life so number one on that spiritual tending is that god is the one that put that um that thing in you right so it's only him that can tend it for you so god put it there it is him alone that can release it that can unleash it that can call it into being luke chapter 1 verse 18 Luke 1 verse 80 it says and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel so John the Baptist was in the desert what was he doing there tending he was sitting on that God and God was tending and then God unleashed him in a certain season so for you to become useful to your generation you must allow god to tend that which is he has put in you oh my god when you read matthew chapter Three, verse 5 it says then went out to him talking about john the baptist went out to him jerusalem that means a nation went out to, the, to john the baptist and all judea and all the region round about jordan round about jordan so we see a man that god had tended his 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 his, his uh his his vessel and then we see nations coming to him he says all of jerusalem judea every region around about jordan moved to the light that that this man was emitting so there is a light you would emit and people will come to you and you will become a man of influence there is a light that will come forth from you spiritually i'm talking about spiritually now and it will attract nations it will attract kings the question i want to ask you this day is what is the light coming from you in the spirit realm is there a light coming from you 
what is the nature of that light what is the strength of that light is only by staying on that god that that light can become intense as a church there is a light coming from you that is what will attract men to that church as a company you are running a business it is the light of your business that would attract kings to you for that business it's not just about your skill no it's not just about your skill there are people that are skillful yet they have not given up a light in the spirit realm and they are still there eating their skill people are not laying demand on their skill oh jesus there are people that are skillful but yet nations are not coming to them kings are not coming to them so it's not first about your skill it's first about the light that you are emitting in the spirit realm so do you want to be useful to the nations then stay on that god let him hunt that which he that which is already in you then the nations will come to you nations only come to those that have something to offer so when they see your light in the spirit realm they are attracted to you you know when you are not emitting light you will be running after nations but when you emit your light nations will run after you so you must stay under god till your light shines forth see your vibe begins to emit in luke chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 you know we see jesus after his baptism he said he was moved by the holy spirit into the wilderness and he stayed there 40 days and 40 nights he was sitting under god the temptation was not the, the, the thing the only thing that happened in that place jesus was sitting under god he was in fasting he was in prayer and god was tending him and then in verse 14 we see him coming out and the scripture says and the fame of him went abroad and then people started seeking him so he stayed on that god he, 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 his lights came forth and then people started coming his fame energy from him spread around and pulled people to him so when you sit on that god there is a fragrance you carry that brings men to you there is a fragrance you carry by staying on that god so yes you may be skillful but the first point is what stay on that god let your light emit in the spirit realm let your light you know in the in the in the spirit you know the spirit realm is what controls the physical so in the spirit realm what 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 communicates to them is not what what communicates to us in the spirit realm light is a communication sound is a communication so as you are emitting your light in the spirit realm you are communicating very in that communication and then it's attracting nations to you it's attracting kings to you so my brother my sister stay on that god don't rush out of the process god is still sitting on you and you are already wanting to to be seen by men no stay he said john the baptist was in the desert until the time of his showing there is a time of your showing there is a time that god has ordained for your showing and that time is right after he has honed your talent he has honed that which he put in you he has he has he has he has he has given you a strong light and then he will release it to your nation so stay under god don't be in a hurry to leave nations will come to your light they will come to the brightness of your rising number two is is the physical tendon which i have termed develop through obedience so the second nature of light is the light of your skill 
He said, Gentiles will come to your light. So uh, we've looked at it from the spiritual perspective that there's a light you emit in the spirit realm that attracts people. Number two, your skill also attracts men. He says, the giftings of a man will make room for him. So that which God has called you into, tend it physically. Sit on it. If he has called you into the music ministry, sit on it. Develop yourself. Read books. Take courses on music. Practice. If he has called you into um into politics, read in depth into politics, into history. So in in, in this place, you are developing capacity. So, and the beauty is that one of the one of the ways that God does it is that when you, you are staying under Him, He begins to give you instructions. He begins to give you instructions. So it's left for you to obey those instructions. So those instructions may not come as a voice from heaven. It may just be a from a friend, just you know, mentioning something to you. Why don't you take this online course? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? You know, maybe your your mentor saying, Do this, why don't you do this? Do this, do this, do this, do this, and you are obeying, you are heeding to obedience, and then you are being trained. So don't, 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 don't always be waiting for one voice from heaven saying, my son, my son, go and read this book. He may come, you know, just natural from a friend. Why not read this book? And the book will, will, will transform your life when you do. So I called it tending through obedience, developing through obedience. Because what most of us, what we do is that we come and we stay under God, but we are not careful to obey. So we come out and we are praying in the spirit. And God begins to inspire your heart, begins to speak to your heart, saying, for example, um, uh, look into web designing, look into uh, music, read about this man, how did he live his life? And after that prayer, you just go and you carry on with your business and you forget to obey that instruction. But in obeying that instruction, you are letting your light out. Do you understand what we are saying here? So when you sit under God, instructions will always come. Do those things. Do those things. So even Jesus was seen via his obedience. Jesus became useful only after his obedience was complete. Jesus would not have been the author of salvation if he did not complete his course on obedience. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. It says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, that's verse 9, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all that obey him. So Jesus only became after he, he was made perfect via obedience. So in the same way, you will, all, you will become when you are made perfect in obedience. Kabala preno rote vrahanda palagani ship hande ruse vrahata gapaladash zine per ruse frehende kreno rapalagati ye kompreno rapalabhandish eliaka. Begin to talk to God. Our time is fast spent. Begin to talk to God right now. Le ruse vretene meneyande le ruse frehende meneyasha palaba. Le pruno vretene prenem haragadisha prahandia. There is something about your life. There is something in you for the nation. There is something in you. You are not a nobody. There is something in you for the nations. Reprene mene redurhati yekete bele deba. Reprene mele le moje pene ketene mene hande hans yata. Reprene mele le mono mono mo. You are not a nobody. There is something that God has put in you for the nations. Emma hasus the prede. Reprene kanosha. Can you say, Lord, let that which you have put inside me be made manifest. Let me not abort 
that which you have put in me. Let me not live a life that, 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 that does not do everything that you have called me to do. Lord, I run the sofa. I take my place upon the mountain you have given me. In the name of Jesus, I run the sofa. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 he says call on to me and I will show you great and mighty things you know you are wondering what is it that God has put in me he is saying call upon me and I will show you can you say Lord open my eyes let me see that which you have put in me Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Continue praying. Continue praying. Continue praying. Even as we end this broadcast, keep on praying, making that prayer till your eyes are opened. Father Lord, we thank you. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. We have prayed. Amen. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining us in this week's broadcast. This is Obunaya Aboke. And I'll come your way again by next week for this particular program. This is the Encounter Network and we, 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 we receive the word every week. God bless you. Thank you for joining. I believe you've been blessed. You know, you can leave your comment session. You can leave your comment on the comment section if you have a question if you have a testimony you can share it on the comment comment section you can reach out to us via email um send an email to connect with 10 at gmail.com that is connect with ten at gmail.com and we will receive your your communication do where to subscribe to our youtube channel search for obonaya aboke that's o-g-b-o-n-n-a-y-a space a k p o k e search for it on youtube and sus- subscribe to my channel and you will be receiving notification when we send out a material for your spiritual edification for your life assignment god bless you and to have a lovely week bye <music>